for your presence today. Pleasure. Uh, a first uh, question. My father is 18 years old, <laughs> and sometimes say to me that uh, my generation uh, don't understand and don't respect the elders. It's only a different uh, rhythm or speed of life, or there is uh, anything deeper? Well, I think he has a good idea of what's happening. Uh, however, I think things change, society changes, uh, and it's inevitable. And what happens with the family, for some reason, um, the elderly, when we call them elderly, are they elderly when they're in their 60s, 70s, 80s? Well, what happens is the elderly also make a life for themselves in my country, in the, in the United States. They are found in these places that they call uh, senior citizen centers. And they have a place where they find their own company, same age, and they, they live very well. They have a, a good day where they can talk to each other, things that they both understand. They don't have children around because mm -hmm. they feel they raised their children. It's a new generation. This is how they feel. However, I can tell you that I respect very much my grandparents, and I have taught my children to respect their grandparents. So they had a very good rapport with both Andrea and Immaculata, and my Mario's fa family, and my father and mother, Charles and Mary Rafa, Maria, Carmelo. <laughs> and uh, my children just were the, so much better for having them near and, and enjoying them and doing things with them. And uh, so my grandparents and my father and mother and and for my children, their grandparents, they did not go to a senior citizen center. <laughs> they were always with the family. And the children gained so much having their grandparents. The unfortunate part is, and I work with the elderly in uh, New York City, right now uh, we are trying to go to these senior citizen centers and make them do things that are better for them. Because if they think more, and they use their minds uh, and their hands to make things, it's better. Because if they do nothing, it, they stagnate. The, the mind doesn't work at all, and it's not good for them. The doctors even tell us this. So they have to have activity. And, uh, and what I do now is I have them mentor the children. Mm -hmm. I went to them, and they like the idea. Now, I'm talking about 60, 60 70, and up. It's okay. They get along with the child one to one, a mentor with a, me a mentee, little child. And the children love it. They love them. And they keep them so happy because they do and talk together and the respect is there. So that's what's flourishing now in my country. We're trying to do that everywhere, in every program. You say that uh, family is uh, the, the natural place where yes. different generations can meet to, together. Yes. But do you, in your experience or your memory, uh, which are the most important occasion or situation when this meeting can happen? You think about uh, the talking together, but other interesting situations? Well, by a, sp a specific occasion, uh, usually the grandparents lived in the house with the family. So, I mean, uh, my mother, when my father died, my mother went to my brother Frank's house and she had his uh, four children. So she kept her very young and it was uh, very wonderful. They had a great relationship she had. I was a little bit upset I wanted her with me. <laughs> my brother was older <laughs> and he got the preference to have my mother stay with him. But this is a very valuable time for us to remember the elderly and have respect. Don't forget that they deserve all the respect we can give them. And the children have to grow up knowing this. Uh, and children have to be carefully taught. So it's the way the mother and father speak with their elderly and everything, because the children pick up a lot of things. They understand right away. So the respect is important and to have them have a, a liberty of doing what they want to do too. Um, because today, an elderly person is not so elderly, even in the 80s. 
and 90s if you take care of yourself and, and eat well and keep a good diet and, 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 and keep yourself busy with your mind and, and your interests. To, there's so much to do and it's important for the elderly to be used in those regards, you know, because they can do a lot more than we think. Uh, I mean, they didn't become, uh, you know, un unusable. They're just wonderful people, wonderful. And as a mentor, they have been superb for me, for the program. And wonderful people. <laughs> but which is the grace, the specific grace of <coughs> elder age. And at the same time, which is its responsibility from the church and the civil society. The church it, has... The responsibility <coughs> of the, aid, the elderly, <coughs> church <coughs> and the civil society. Yes, uh, because we can't forget the elderly. I mean, just because they're elderly, they're still uh, there and they need help. Uh, and uh, there are many services now for them to stay home if they're ill mm -hmm. and they don't have to rush to a hospital because they can bring some uh, assistance to their homes. And uh, there are, we have a, a great functioning uh, organization in the hospitals <clears throat> that are able to bring uh, assistance and uh, caretakers who come into the home and they help the, the woman, they can clean, they can cook, and they can take care of them in their own home mm -hmm. so they don't have to go to another place. But uh, which is the responsibility of the elder for the society? Yeah. You describe mm -hmm. the, the, the responsibility of the society towards the elders. Yes, yes. And the elders towards the society? Well, they should realize that they are functioning, they are well, if they're not ill, if they're sick, you know, that's another story. But if they're well, they should see, uh, look around and see perhaps who they could help. A child, to mentor a child, uh, to help, uh, you know, a family who needs somebody there for their children to watch them. If the mother's working, that's a wonderful thing too. Mm -hmm. uh, to give an hour, two hours a day. In other words, to be busy they could keep busy and they should be feeling that they can be useful even in the older age. Everybody can do something and they shouldn't feel that they're too old. Who, where is it old? You could be old when you're 20 years old. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's physical. If you're physically well uh, and your mind is working, uh, then you have to stay very involved and, and uh, that makes you younger than ever to keep busy and help other people, it's the best therapy. Mrs. Como, you are the ambassador of an important project for elder people. Can you describe a little? Well, the Mentoring uh, USA program, it started just in the state, New York State Mentoring Program, and we had almost 10,000 children and more, one-to-one, -one, to keep them in school and not to drop out. That's terrible when they drop out because then they wind up in prison. They go into drugs, they do bad things, and these are 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds filled in the prisons with these kids if they leave school. So what we're trying to do is make everybody understand we all have a, a job to do here, is to keep them in school. If the teacher can't do it, we have to get a mentor to help the child understand the value of education that it's in their best interest to stay in school and you know, let their mind work better and do something they can do or with the hands, a, a painting, something. You can always do something, teach a child to do something and, and feel good that they're accomplishing something in their lives. So the interest is there, you have to make them interested and the one-to-one -one works very well. Now the Mentoring USA, why do I say that? Well, in politics, a foolish thing happens. Somebody wasn't thinking straight. You never cut a program out from Buffalo to Long Island. You don't do that. And in two weeks, they cut the whole program out, one-to-one -one mentoring that Mario Cuomo and I had put in place. What happens is that my son Andrew, he comes to me and he says, Mama, listen, we have to put the program back because the children are dropping out of school. Even in those two weeks, there was a terrible change. So I said, well, what do you suggest? And he said, uh, I was trying to fix my apartment. You know, we had lost the election. And he said, well, 
He said, uh, that same program you had when dad wanted you to uh, do it for the children, you can do it again. But we'll call it Mentoring USA. Now we'll go national, international. Now we're in Italy. We're in Andalusia, Morocco, Benin, Africa. We have moved and done a lot of mentoring for a lot of little children in different countries and our whole country. We're in 12 major cities. So you see, la volontà. You have to have the will to do something. If you have the will and the desire and you know you're right, it's a good thing. You can reach for the stars, my husband used to say. My father said it first. In this country, in America, we can reach for the stars.